Hi, I'm Brad Orlock, and it's awesome to be joining you here for Ignite. I'm the Microsoft Alliance Director at Own Backup, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to our company and experience in backup and recovery for Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. As I'll cover in just a few minutes, Own Backup has a long and rich history of helping thousands of companies protect their data in the cloud. And now I couldn't be more pleased that we've extended our backup and recovery solution to include Microsoft. In today's session, my colleague, Alan Garcia, and I are going to talk about why SaaS data protection is such a critical topic and show you how easy it is to safeguard the mission critical data that drives your business. But first, Alan, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about your background? Absolutely, Brad. Welcome, everyone. It's very exciting to join you all for Microsoft Ignite. As Brad mentioned, I'm Alan Garcia, and at the risk of showing my age, I have a confession. I've been working with Dynamics since version 1.0, and have spent over 20 years implementing Dynamics 365 and other Microsoft solutions. My experience includes time as a CXO in the partner channel, as part of the Microsoft technical sales leadership team, and the role of principal solution architect for the Microsoft Fast Track team. Looking back, it's hard to believe that I've been involved in over 700 Dynamics 365 implementations. All of this provided the perfect background for my latest role as principal solution engineer here at Own Backup. Now, my focus is to work directly with Microsoft customers to help them with their backup and recovery strategies. Wow, 700 Dynamics implementations. I'm sure you've probably seen it all and have some pretty interesting stories to tell, but let's save those for another day. Instead, let me take just a few minutes to help everyone get oriented to what Own Backup is and the role that we serve in data protection. Since 2016, Own Backup has been focused on SaaS backup and recovery. Over 4,000 SaaS customers rely on us to keep their mission critical data safe. And our solution has been used tens of thousands of times to help organizations like yours recover their data when they experience loss or corruption. Today, we're the world's leading SaaS data protection platform and are proud to be the top rated solution for SaaS data protection on G2. With our cloud-based solution, we provide automated daily backups for Dynamics 365. And more importantly, we equip you with the ability to rapidly and precisely restore data when things go wrong. Some of the most common data loss and corruption scenarios that we see are caused by human errors, failed integrations, misconfigured flows, and increasingly malicious intent. And with our recent acquisition of RevCult, we also provide data security and governance solutions to help your organization mitigate many of the risks from happening in the first place. The goal of this session is to show backup and recovery in Dynamics 365 customer engagement natively and establish best practices for preventing data loss from disrupting your business operations. Now, let me hand it over to Alan so he can provide you with a deep dive and illustrate common scenarios that can create data loss or corruption, as well as how to recover in D365 CE. Alan, take it away. Thanks, Brad. By the end of this session, you'll know how to evaluate backup and recovery options, create a comprehensive backup strategy, and operationalize backup and recovery procedures. To kick things off, let's take a moment to explore what we're seeing in the wild these days with SaaS applications as a whole. Along with Forrester Research, we recently completed a survey of over 1,300 customers of SaaS applications, including Dynamics 365. What we're seeing are two general trends. One is that data loss and corruption are happening out there every hour of every day. These incidents range from small data corruptions to large scale, catastrophic events that bring businesses to a halt. Drilling a little more into that, we can see that 49% of data loss is caused by human error, and 42% of these situations result in system downtime. And other research shows that with the aggressive trends of low-code application development, the vast majority of businesses don't have continuity plans in their center of excellence. The bottom line is that the risk of data loss is very real and the impact on the organization can be crippling. Every SaaS customer has to face the reality that it's not a matter of if data loss will occur, 
It's a matter of when. The second general trend is that every major SaaS provider, including Microsoft, uses a shared responsibility model. In other words, the onus of backing up data falls to the subscriber. Brad, what are you hearing about all this? Well, Alan, there's a common misconception that there's a magic undo button somewhere and that data that is lost or corrupted can be easily restored. Unfortunately, the fact is that unless a customer has taken proactive steps by engaging with a company like Own Backup, they have little recourse and many don't find out until it's too late. If we dig in, we found that in Section 6B of the Microsoft Service Agreement, it's there too. It states, we strive to keep the services up and running. However, all online services suffer occasional disruptions and outages. And Microsoft is not liable for any disruption or loss you may suffer as a result. In the event of an outage, you may not be able to retrieve your content or data that you store. We recommend that you regularly back up your content and data and that you store on the services or store using third-party apps and services. And in fact, according to former Microsoft Field CTO, Diana Kelly, she said it this way in her blog post, when it comes to cloud computing and data protection, it's a shared responsibility model between the cloud service provider and the customer that's analogous to the relationship between a car owner and a car manufacturer. But let's get back to the deep dive. How is all of this relevant for Dynamics 365 customers, Alan? Lots of ways. Just think about all events that occur in your D365 and Power Platform ecosystem and ask yourself if any of these could create data disruptions in your enterprise. Right from the start, when you go live or after the fact, when you're bringing on new users, there are infinite possibilities for problems to occur. As people ramp, learn, and explore, you can count on data corruption happening. Also, think about those same users learning how to export and import from Excel or to do bulk updates. One bad formula or fill series instead of fill down, and data can get sloppy pretty quick. Or imagine a misconfiguration with server-side sync and all the data that can flow in from the Outlook side of things. Also, don't forget that we have the richness of Power Automate in the Power Platform. So any automated flows will have the potential to corrupt or even delete data. Some of you might even have bespoke Power Apps that you've created that read and write back into your D365 data. In a world of low code and citizen developers, that doesn't usually equate to good things for data sanctity. If you have Power Portals deployed, now you're opening up data changes for users outside the walls of your organization. So that can, and rightfully should, be scary. Obviously, integrations from external systems will be a major risk to data. But don't forget that when metadata changes, data can too. So every time you publish a solution, there's a chance that something could go sideways. It's no secret that there are a million things to consider when deploying Dynamics 365. That's exactly the reason why Microsoft created the Success by Design book written by my old peers on the Fast Track team. Unfortunately, though, it only addresses backup and recovery a few dozen times out of nearly 700 pages. I'll save you the library reading, though. Microsoft highlights the best practice that you should really have a comprehensive backup and restore strategy in place. There are no specifics like what we're talking about today. They even call out that, and this is a direct quote, recovery would be difficult, costly, and take a lot of time and effort. As a part of the education process, we've provided three great reference links for Microsoft documentation. The first, is a step-by-step -step guide for performing backups in the Power Platform Admin Center. The second is a more granular detail around the automated backups that Microsoft performs as part of the MSA and SLA. This includes a weekly full backup, differentials every 12 to 20, 24 hours, and leveraging transaction logs for point-in-time recovery options. The third is a quick reference to some handy PowerShell scripts that can be leveraged for any customers who want to build in automated processes for backups. These three documents summarize all that is available for D365 customers when it comes to backup and recovery. Today's discussion focuses heavily on the first one. 
Now that we know what Microsoft provides for tooling and recommends for D365 best practices, it's time to dig deeper into general best practices for backup and recovery. As a customer, you should be considering most, if not all of these top things when putting together a backup and recovery strategy. First, the recovery point objective and recovery time objective, commonly known as RPO, RTO, should be something a customer has control over. This is a policy that defines your organization's comfort levels for data loss and corruption. A good plan should also have a bifurcated infrastructure plan. This basically means to keep your data and backup recovery solution outside of the source. So if the SaaS application becomes inaccessible, you can still connect to it. Retention policies need to be flexible so that companies in compliance situations can adapt to changes made by external regulators. Compliance requirements like SEC, HIPAA, and FIPS will continue to evolve. Another thing a good plan will account for is the ability to easily query backup data prior to a restore event. Performing blind restores will more often lead to a new set of data loss and corruptions to address. And finally, the best plans can be with something a customer can operationalize and repeat with regularity and ease. Review analytics of the overall solution and maintain some level of automated alerting. With all of these ideas in place, every customer should participate in a proof of concept or a POC to avoid any unforeseen hangups when you decide to implement a solution. Don't let your good ideas become a risk to your data. Taking it a step further, once a backup and recovery strategy has become a solution, it must be operationalized. That means it isn't the kind of solution you validate and purchase once, then put in a closet and wait for lightning to strike. This is something you want to rehearse weekly to make sure you're ready for disaster when or if it occurs. Remember, 42%, almost half, of customers with data loss experience system downtime. You don't want to be one of them. You should also understand what your company's expectations are around which roles and titles can perform the steps and how long it will take them. Obviously, fast, easy, and reliable are the top goals here. And finally, when a backup and recovery strategy gets operationalized, your company should establish some patterns around reporting on things like system performance and any data risk or anomalies that may be exposed each week. And yes, as you should have been expecting by now, there will be times for the operations team to actively take corrective actions and or preventative actions for the best health of your data. So now let's take a closer look at what you have at your fingertips with D365 and the Power Platform Admin Center. First, it's nice and easy to see a short list of all your environments in your tenant. And if we wanna create a backup, that's super easy too. Simply select your target environment, choose backups from the top menu and click create. From there, give it a text label and add any notes and you're done. But where does that backup actually get stored? And can you access these if you can't access the Power Platform Admin Center? It's sort of like keeping your spare car key in the glove box. So now let's perform a restore of a backup. That too is incredibly easy. Simply choose an environment from the list, then pick restore or manage from the top menu. And here you can choose from either an automated system backup or any of the manual ones an administrator might have created. Notice with the backup option that only dates with a successful backup within the retention period will appear. That's 28 days for production and just seven for sandboxes. For demonstration purposes, I'll choose a manual backup from the list and hit restore from the toolbar. The right pane flyout gives me just a couple of options and a reminder warning that it will perform a complete overwrite of what's in place. The key option is that I can choose any sandbox in the tenant. So here, I'll choose the current one as opposed to an alternate target environment. I hit restore, 
then get yet another warning reminder that it will perform a complete overwrite of all data. Now I can sign my life away by hitting confirm and walk away. We're done. Yep, that's all there is to see with the available functions for backup and restore in Power Platform Admin Center. But I'm hoping most of you already knew that. What is more important to understand is what is not there. Let's take another look at this list of environment backups and ask ourselves what's in each of them. Currently, there's no way to understand what is in a backup unless it gets restored to a sandbox first. This impacts your static tenant storage as per your Microsoft licensing agreements. Imagine if you have a license entitlement for 500 gigabytes of Dataverse storage and your production database is 200 gigabytes. If you need to restore two different copies of backups into sandboxes so you can cross compare data, you won't have enough available storage to do this because you'd need 400 gigabytes of available space and there would only be 300 since production is taking 200. And that's just for a side-by-side -side comparison. Imagine if it's a range of dates, nobody could afford that. But Microsoft has done a great thing by shifting the focus of the legacy data export service, which wrote to a customer's paid Azure SQL subscription. This has shifted into the newly branded Azure Synapse Link for Dataverse, previously known as Project Athena. This now gives you the ability to export to a paid for Azure Data Lake and Azure Synapse subscription. Using SQL change tracking features behind the scenes, this will write to a centralized data lake and even include snapshot values, which Microsoft refers to as a pen. The challenge that it still exists, though, is the whole spare key in the glove box thing. Not good. Another challenge with this is that it presents every customer with a sliding scale licensing requirement. Think, use more, pay more. Finally, if you put these other challenges to the side, it's not enough to simply have the backup data and be able to query it. A good rounded out strategy will also offer the ability to restore from it. And that doesn't exist with the tooling provided by Microsoft, unless you want to write your own custom code. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Brad, to talk just a bit about how we have focused on these areas at own backup so folks can have a baseline on what to look for or create. Thanks, Alan. Great stuff. And it really makes me think about the value of all that data that we put into our SaaS applications and use on a daily basis. Here at Own Backup, we've been specializing in backup and recovery for years, even back when the world was starting to adopt cloud compute and storage and SaaS applications and services. So when we decided to tackle backup and recovery for D365, our mission was to provide a solution that provides everything that you need to protect your data from disasters of all shapes and sizes, yet is easy to use when the pressure is on. Key requirements for many organizations include things like customizable retention policies that allow you to store backups for up to 99 years without worrying about the size of files, seamless data exports, the ability to quickly identify and isolate unwanted data changes by comparing two different backups. Search tools to find specific data or attachments in your backups. Proactive alerts based on customizable rules to alert you when data anomalies are detected, like when 10,000 records are changed or deleted. Tools and processes to help you remain compliant with ever-changing compliance regulations, such as GDPR and CCPA's right to be forgotten. And of course, most importantly of all, rapid restoration capabilities that make it easy to granularly recover data with relationships intact into a sandbox or production environment. And that's precisely what we're now able to do for Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform ecosystem. Ultimately, we want to empower you to own and protect your data on any cloud platform. Thanks for joining me today, Alan. Of course, Brad, it was my pleasure. Please check out our two minute demo available on our partner showcase page and feel free to reach out for a one-on-one -on -one data protection conversation. Thank you and enjoy the rest of Ignite.